down and this Monday morning as usual what we do is to look at happenings in and around the aviation sector be it in Nigeria and in the foreign scene and here we'll take a quick look on what we started about three weeks ago that is the Cecil Lusso uh, crash but before we commence on the last segment uh, or yes last segment of that discussion today we took a quick look at what happened yesterday in Abuja uh, where a Medview aircraft aboard flights of course uh, that flight was scheduled for a segment of Lagos Abuja then Abuja to Meduguri then at about 2 p.m. 14.00 hours when the Medview airline completed the first leg Lagos to Abuja then on takeoff uh, there was a ramp return, which means return to base after taxing. And, well, many ask why. And the simple reason is that there is an indicator lamp that, of course, showed, which signifies that there is a minor disorder. And in order to, to of course, uh, comply to safety, uh, the pilot had to, you know, abort that flight. And passengers weren't... Um, sad about it because it has to do with issue of safety they have to disembark and in also complying with the passengers bill of right uh, they were also taken care of you know by the airline you know for delaying the flight and that is a one common degree one which means that we are getting closer to what is obtainable in the uh, international um, what, what you call it now best uh, practices we have to look at this and many other issues your number one aviation freak in Nigeria uh, man who is also a licensed estate sovereign value Mr. Gordon Ike is here very good morning hi good morning Joe mm -hmm. uh, today they kept us so, <laughs> so far apart, apart. So, so what's going on is this, is this a deliberate <laughs> act or just some no, coincidence no, no, no. Yeah, maybe <laughs> just to do a little of uh, uh, what Medview did yesterday when uh, there was a ramp return yeah, yeah Joe, so, so, so what uh, I'm, I'm your, very your, thrilled mm -hmm. very thrilled about that, uh, that that report Joe it encourages me it is it simply shows that uh, we're making the desired impact mm. um, what, what we are discussing and what we are insisting should be the minimum standard to keep us safe in the skies that uh, those we are talking to are listening mm. uh, so I'm thrilled now Joe let me tell you about this uh, awesome machine called airplane I always say to anyone that listens listen the airplane is a fitful mm. mach uh, machine it's uh, it's so faithful that if anything is about to go wrong it tells you straight away um uh, the reason planes fall of the skies are uh, continuing to say the same all the time is the fact that human operators can be unfaithful and dishonest and that's why airplanes fall of the skies if we were to match the faithfulness of this awesome machine they will never fall of the skies. Now, let, let me uh, bring to your notice again what I had said several in the past, that if you walk into the cockpit first thing in the morning in a state that is, is known in aviation as dark and cold, you know, the reason they call it dark is the fact that uh, modern airplanes have glass cockpits that when you shut down, all lights go off and all you see is just dark screens until you turn them on and they begin to light up mm -hmm. and and then of course light up the mm -hmm. the instruments that are loaded they're, they're in, there, cool. put it in there of course you've packed the airplane overnight and uh, the, the 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 night cold and the dew and everything with, with the sun on it and as, as you and then the cockpit is such an enclosed little you know compartment mm -hmm. and then you open up you find it quite cold first thing in the morning and everywhere is dark right. so the, that's why in aviation it's described as dark and cold now when you're walking at that point and and you want to make your your startup as as soon as you turn on this the, the systems even, even before you you think about uh, doing the starting uh, you know procedure for your engines you if you look at the roof of of the um, uh, of the cockpit is loaded with buttons and knobs running left right back you know front in their numbers in their numbers 
all and then all th those are specific uh, those are proposals. scanning those are scanning buttons and knobs before you even do anything the rule is you scan you know uh, front to back left to right if anything is wrong in any part of the, that airplane it tells the pilot straight away right there there and then even before you start up now if for any reason like it happened in this particular flight in question um, you, you didn't quite uh, you know get information that something was going on you know happening that would endanger the flight as you are as, as you are moving like it happened in May view you either get a, a, vo a voice actuator talking to you really telling you that this system needs check or you have a boss that that will give you a light and because the pilot is already trained on what each and every one of them represents he gets the you know the information straight away but r the reason sometimes we get careless and uh, slaughter people is that some pilots for some s selfish reasons or for some habit of you know uh, uh, acting in a, in a daredevil uh, you know fashion will get all this information and uh, do nothing or decide to oh come on let's 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 go we can make it that that business of let's go we can make it like we saw in the dana air crash on the 3rd of june um uh, 2012 that crash had absolutely no business taking place because between 14 to 17 minute of that flight when they left abuja the two pilots knew something was wrong AIB report, the, the, that's the Accident Investigation Bureau report, you know, said that very clearly when they listened to the, um, uh, you know, voice recorder, you know, when the two pilots were conversing. They knew something was wrong. And, and I, had, I, they, that point, had they made a 180 degrees, that which is a U-turn, and headed back to Abuja, the time within which the second engine failed would not have been attained. They would have touched down in Abuja and would have brought people home back safely and dealt with the back airplane and maybe move them um, away from, uh, you know, from that plane to another and continue their, their, their journey. You know, I have shared this with you you know, privately, but I don't, I don't remember if I, I shared it on air. One experience that you know, I, I, I had traveling from Los Angeles you know, to, to New York in company of my wife. Midway. Uh, to uh, you know to, uh, to New York, the pilot announced that uh, they were having issues. That his his computer system was supposed to be in sync with that of his co-pilot, but they, the the two of them noticed that one computer was saying something to the captain, and the, the, the that, that of the else. yes was saying something else to the um, uh, uh, to the co-pilot. Now. The, the, the captain, you know, came on radio to the passengers announcing that he was going to, uh, you know, touch down somewhere where they call the uh, mid, um, what's the word that they, they used to describe that area, you know, in between the, the east and the west, as, you know, one of the airports uh, along his route, uh, that uh, we were going to be spending about 40, 45 minutes uh, to see if um, uh, engineers would be able to attend to it. And then he went at length to explain to us that, listen, I could fly you with my you know, uh, computer the way it's going, it appears to be the correct one, but that the issue bugging his mind was that whatever that caused that situation might worsen and maybe blank out the, the, the two systems and then it would just be a you know, ghost flight flying to nowhere until we run out of fuel and crash. And so he didn't want to take that risk. Joe, in aviation, everything is safety, safety, safety and, and safety. safety no, nothing in between. Yeah, now, let, let's also look at this uh, side where all the passengers disembarked mm. in an orderly manner, according to the statement, and they returned to the launch and were catered to by the airline in accordance with relevant uh, and if that story is true, regulation regarding yeah. treatment yeah. of persons. If that story is true, it simply says that my view is leading the way. Joe, remember, we always said on this mm. program that 
what we are trying to achieve is to get the operators and, 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 and those um, uh, actors and actresses in the uh, aviation sector to begin to do what's right all the time. Not sometimes, doing what is right all the time because there is no room for risk taking and there's no room for messing around. It's an international business, controlled internationally. The, the International Civil Aviation Organization, ICAO, will rule out their, you know, their rules and recommendations and ask nations of the world that are their members mm -hmm. to domesticate those rules mm -hmm. and make sure that they are carried out to the letter in order to uh, uh, ensure safety. So you can see now, just imagine for one second that that beautiful pilot and I love and respect him. I'm going to look out to see if I, I will find who he is and give him a little, a little present from me. Special one, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to find out and then uh, see whether he's allowed to, um, uh, you know, to, to receive me with my little present. Mm -hmm. I'm very thrilled about it. Imagine for one second, Joe, that the guy saw the light or the voice actuator or the bars and he said to his uh, 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 co-pilot ah, never mind it's not serious let's, let's, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> let's move we'll, on we'll soon get there in 45 uh, yeah, minutes if you don't and, do, you know, and the passengers our will not be paid very well and the innocent passengers will never know you know in the cabin that anything of such was going on in the cockpit and the two dead devils just hit, hit the skies and soon it becomes a serious matter, and then the plane crashes and slaughters people. All we hear next is grammar. We will investigate. We will find out, you know, so that it doesn't happen again. But but it, it happened because two mad people were in the cockpit. That's why it happened. That's that's at the end of the whole story. That's all we get. So it's congratulations to those uh, pilots. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, uh, Captain, in case anybody that knows you is listening, I've got a good present for you. It's going to be expensive, mm -hmm. be sure of that. Mm -hmm. um, somebody make contact with me quickly and tell me that he knows that particular pilot. I will go and give him a hug, give him a handshake and say, encourage you to continue mm -hmm. to operate this way. And those others that are out there who are still behaving in their devil fashion, mm -hmm. stop, stop, stop. Mm -hmm. Planes are faithful. We can match their faithfulness and keep them safe in the skies. So, Joe. Yeah, well, this is really, uh, by, uh, to my own uh, knowledge, the uh, very first time that has happened, uh, whereby a pilot had to abort the flight even after he has started the, 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 the airplane. Yeah. And also the first time that, you know, that part of passengers being of right was actually, uh, I mean, I mean, I'd heard to whereby the passengers are taken to a lounge. Oh yeah, we're catered for mm -hmm. in an orderly manner. Yeah, I mean it's the first time Me I am here. Red view that. is leading the way. Mm. That's what it simply shows. Mm. Um, so let, they, they, they will just come forward, we can give them some free advice for a while before they begin to pay. <laughs> they can just come forward. Sure, sure, sure. sure <laughs> yes, yes, sure. yes. yes. We, yeah. we really can, can do that so that others yeah. can, you know, take a cue. Take a cue from what Medview has done. You yes. know, it's really worthy of commendation terms of. Now, let's quickly look at the. The conclusion. Uh, uh, com uh, yeah. Uh, the conclusion yeah, of okay. um, uh, what we started. A bottom, a bottom mm. landing below the decision altitude. This is a little mm. air crash. Okay. We want to just quickly conclude that with uh, mm. three clips and then hold uh, more discussions before the time chases us away. Yeah, from sure. So let's start with the clip, clip one, please. That's it. Right, right. Um, Joe, we have a, 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 a situation with this, um, uh, what they call it. Uh, anyway, let's, let's just read on and then take it from, from there later on. Um, probable cause of accident. Mm. That's clip one. The investigations carried out by the Accident Investigation Bureau, AIB, show that weather was deteriorating very fast as Soviso Flight 1145 made its final approach. Visibility was next to zero. Change of wind speed and direction was detected, suggesting that wind shear was taking place. We've dealt with this wind shear you know, sometime in the past, and uh, being a nightmare of uh, pilots. Uh, the, the flight data record, FDR, 
show that the flight was smooth and uneventful until its final approach. Joe, at that point, there again, I blame the, the pilot for being a little careless. When he got to his decision altitude and looked out through his windshield and wouldn't find the wrong way, and of course, the weather was very unfriendly. Everywhere was dark and the shower, you know, rain, rain, you know, coming down, and he could see absolutely nothing. At that decision altitude, it was as easy as ABC to push your power stick, pull your joy. The plane goes, just gets all back into the skies for you to go and make a, a turn around and try again. But if it's the, the weather was so ugly that there was no need to try again, you get permission from, uh, from the control tower uh, that you would love, love to go to Enugu or, or go to Owere you know, to, uh, to drop these passengers and uh, hope, maybe wait for a while and hope that there will be an improvement and then you bring them to Port Harcourt. But no, everything is usually calculated in, if I don't land now, money, money, my loss of business, uh, the, this and that. Some of the ugly things running through the heads of people who put this material monetary gains ahead of safety. But I, but I stand to be corrected. Is it I, that I, when a pilot, you know, make a U-turn or decide to, you know, um, abort the flight or, you know, you know, land in another airport, are they, are they so charged? Well, uh, uh, it, it might well be. Uh, I'm going to find out that what's, how how they deal with that. But then again, remember they're going to bomb fuel yeah. to go to I that mean, other airport. Yeah. Bomb fuel is all money. So those are calculated. You know that about that. You you remember that the bomb fuel. Yeah. And to put you remember the airplane that killed those um, uh, footballers. You, you remember what the pilot did? How he lied to the control tower of the, where he was visiting. You know, told them that he was taken out from a place that was 500 nautical miles shorter than where he actually took, uh, to, uh, took off from. Because if he had announced the truth, what would have happened would have been that they would say to him, you must make a detour to go to such and such a place and top up your fuel before coming uh, in. So he wanted to avoid that, and so he told a lie and gave them false information about what he, where he was living. But what happened, as he approached, his thought had been that, oh, as soon as I get there, they will give me my vector, give me my uh, permission to land, and I will just head in and touch down. I, uh, I have four, four hours, 20 minutes uh, you know, worth of fuel, and uh, my journey to the place will be about four, you know, four hours, so I have, I have 20 minutes to play with, and all those kind of silly thoughts. And he lied. But what happened, Joe? The, the devil struck on that day. As he was approaching, another airplane, as a matter of fact, it was said to be a cargo airplane, had technical issues and had radioed in that he should be given you know, clearance to land. And so they gave priority to that particular airplane that, that, that had issues and put him on a holding pattern. So by the time he circled and circled and he was running out of where, he became hysterical and began to shout. Well, Vettorere, Vettorere, you know, speaking in, um, was it Spanish or, or Portuguese that he was, he was speaking? Because I, I heard that voice on the neck when, you know, it was published. You know, the way he was screaming and begging to be allowed to come in. It turned out, Joe, that he didn't have enough fuel mm -hmm. and that he lied. Because the control tower had imagined that from where he came, that he had over an hour Mm. You know, no, because, because the, the dispatchers know that if you are if you are taking off from yeah. a certain certain point, you cannot take off without you know certain capacity or, or volume of um, that's correct of you know invasion fuel. Yes, and so if, that, so if that's where you are coming from, that means you may still have fuel that will take you. That you was the calculation on on holding part. Th that's correct. That was the, the calculation of the of the uh, control tower. That they said, "Come on." Wait, we have a, a, a worse emergency. Some, some, some airplane had technical issues and had to be let in first. Then eventually they let him come in. He, 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 he did his loop, headed in for his final approach, but the fuel couldn't take him there. About 11 
kilometers to, to, the, to the tip of the runway, he came down and unnecessarily, unnecessarily, selfishly, and in extreme silliness, you know, slaughtered those beautiful footballers. So that's what happens all the time. The airplane will be faithful to us, but we choose to be unfaithful and big liars and dishonest. That's, that's all. And why planes fall off the skies? And, 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 Let, let's uh, get to clip two very quickly. And, and, well, the, the funny part is that it's not only you know, happening to the, 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 the airplanes, you know, in terms of uh, unfaithfulness. Even those who use car, most time they know that the, the fuel in the car can't take them, say, from here to somewhere in, in Kagini, you know, here in the yeah. FCT. But yeah. they just want to, let, let, let us drive and <laughs> off the engine and allow it to just roll. <laughs> but just, and, just, and, just. And, and by the time they come in contact with heavy traffic, because the but here's the difference. We're we're about to compare apple with oranges now. Both of them are edible and sweet, but they're not the same. <laughs> I mean, if your if your car stalls, you park by the roadside and you're still alive and healthy. Well, yeah. well, if you're yeah, airplane yeah, 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 stores, that, 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 stores, you die that, 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 <laughs> and kill yourself. What I'm saying here is that we've got to be serious with, oh, yes. with, um, oh, yes. with um, of course, without uh, fear or aviation fear, but just, just make sure you give to the machine what it is. There is nothing in between. It's safety, safety, safety. Nothing in between. If anything sneaks in, you stop the flight and deal with it. That's the rule, and that's the way to go. So let's go to clip two, please. Yeah, we're there. Um, witnesses. A few individuals witnessed the final approach and crash of Sosoliso Flight 1145. They include a Nigerian Airspace Management Agency, NAMA Security uh, Guard. B, another Sosoliso Airlines pilot departing to Enugu. Accident Investigation Bureau AIB engaged the NAMA security guard uh, who was stationed about one kilometer from the runway. The guard stated that dark skies and light precipitation were over the airport. He claimed that the plane was not stable as it passed over him. He also, keep that in mind because I'm going to explain something to you. He also stated uh, that approach lights were not on. I, I've said that before about those, um, uh, even the, that of the airplane that should be on, that those lights were not on in spite of everywhere being dark and raining. Just imagine what might have been ringing in the pilot's head that he chose to make those kind of uh, risky landing. Seconds after overflying his position, he heard a loud bang and fire erupted with thick uh, smoke. Let's do the final clip so I can explain something to you. Clip three, very quickly. Yeah, very, thank you very much. Witness continue. Witnesses rather continue. The Sosoliso Airlines pilot departing Port Harcourt to Enugu uh, reported adverse weather conditions at the Port Harcourt International Airport. Even the firemen on duty claim that bad weather associated with high wind forced them to reposition their equipment. Conclusion. After a thorough investigation, the Accident Investigation Bureau AIB concluded that the probable cause of the crash was the crew's decision to continue the approach beyond the decision altitude without having the runway in sight. Did you hear that? That's what was AIB, the every, um, uh, a, um, uh, Accident Investigation uh, Bureau. Now, bad weather was also blamed for the accident. The International Civil uh, Aviation Organization, ICAO, recommended that the family of each of the victims should be paid 18,157 US dollars, which at that time amounted to um, uh, equivalent of uh, three uh, uh, million naira. Up until this day, uh, Joe, one is not sure that all those monies have been paid mm -hmm. out to the families. Uh, someday in the future, we are going to join issues by have been able to collect some information on mm -hmm. p parents of victims, especially those Loyola uh, Jesuit uh, students. Remember, my children were were, mm -hmm. were in school at the time. One was in SS, uh, uh, you know, uh, 
one at the time, and the other one was in the JS, JS3. Um, you know, so those were the classmates that they lost uh, at the time. And I keep imagining sometimes, I say, if I had been living in Potaka, perhaps my own kids would have been victims as well. It's so painful and touchy. I hate to discuss this sort of thing because it really, really, really hurts me when I discuss it. Now, well, here and, we are. And even as you yeah. speak now, this is a solution is even more important. Oh, uh, well, here we go. Uh, yes. Um, so, Joe, uh, let's look at uh, people are beginning to wonder decision decision attitude decision attitude give me that linear sure let me uh, use a little time we have to explain something to to uh, to, to but, um, three minutes left yeah oh, sure I'll, I'll be able to do. remember i taught you about what keeps this machine afloat it is um um uh, a, a principle that's known as benoli's you know principle if you look at the average wing of an airplane it's it, 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 it's kind of uh uh, convex on the top, you know, kind of little slight curve on the top, but the beneath is completely flat, completely flat. Now the principle says that if you if you have a flowing fluid, be it water, be it um, uh, wind, you know, coming across this this shape, that the one running on top is faster. That is the wind running on top is faster than the one running below, thereby creating uh, low pressure on top and high pressure beneath. And that's what really, you know, uh, as the, this plane is tearing away at high speed, that's what gives you your, your elevation. P people often think that for you to elevate that you need to be this way. No, if you do that, your plane will stall and drop off the sky like a piece of stone. Elevation actually takes place in the wings, not, not with the activity of the elevator. What the elevator only does for you is to help you change your pitch this way and that way within acceptable angle. But in actual sense, your elevation takes place this way vertically as you're tearing away you know, horizontally forward. Now, if you come to your decision altitude, it's been calculated, depending on the elevation of the airport, it's been calculated that within that altitude, some, depending on the elevation of the airport, sometimes 300 feet, other times 400 feet, as the case may be. You know, now, if you, if you are still there, the speed that you, you still have is high enough to enable you tip up a little bit and go back into the skies with power. Now, as soon as you drop below it, gravitational pull, the natural phenomenon of the gra gra you know, gravity, mm -hmm. is higher. Pulling this very heavy machine that's loaded with human beings and a lot of you know, luggage you know, in there, is pulling on it. At, th at that point that you have gotten lower, speed is also being reduced, sometimes about 130 knots. You know? So the plane is now like a, a bed that is wobbling, you know, kind of, oh, please let me, let me down, let me mm -hmm. down. If at this point you need to put power and get off, you have, you have two challenges. Number one, your jet engines need six seconds to respond to your power demand. I've taught you that during, during jet engine series that we did. You need, as you put your power, you count one, two, three, four, five. Before you get the push, the engine, you know that sort of thing. Mm. That's the nature of the jet engine. You have that to contend with. And remember, the plane is busy going, going, going down. Because so, so you now have to, first of all, check the difference between, uh, I mean, if six set, if the plane will touch down within four or five seconds, and of it's course useless. the time it will take you for the, the engine to, to respond. respond. It will, that was what happened to Sosoliso. The man was at his decision altitude, looked out, couldn't find the wrong way. He decided to do a daredevil show and continued to, to go down. At the time he realized that it was really pretty dangerous. 
He called for, he spoke to the uh, ATC, the uh, you know, uh, air traffic control, that he needed to do uh, a missed approach. It was too late. He put his power, the engine was waiting for his normal six seconds to respond. And then the plane was still going down. And the plane was still going down. Then, uh, the, and of course, the, the undercarriages at a particular altitude will lock when you open them. They will lock even if, if uh, within that altitude. Even if you, you know, uh, uh, push back your your lever to get them back in, they won't respond until you get back to the appropriate altitude that is being programmed to have them unlock and then fold, fold in. So what did he get? A covert on his part, made contact, broke the airplane into two, and one part went on to the runway. The rest was bad history that we don't want to be remembering. So that's what happened. Uh, um, and so pilots must mm. obey these rules all the time. They must obey these rules all the time. No chance. No chance for okay. Okay. For well, uh, that's yeah. the uh, much we have today. We just have to end it here. Time is usually not our friend. <laughs> And of course, Medview Med 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 people Med to come back to us. Yeah, Medview, of course, um, uh, we'll look at. We'll, we'll give you some advice. We'll give you some uh, some advice. Uh, and then uh, within this seg within this segment, of all course, program, yes, all that's right, program. that's right. Yeah, so but yeah. Um, as a gift, as a gift, <laughs> because uh, we are very thrilled. It shows that somebody is listening to us. Mm. Go ahead. Uh, all right. Then uh, what what do we have next week? Quickly. Oh yeah, we are going to be looking at. Um, uh, the, the, the ADC flight 53 hmm. you, you remember the one that was taken off from Abuja and then it, oh, came down that killed um, uh, Mashido and, and a lot of other you know very worthy Nigerians I mean I'm talking about the uh, 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 the late Sultan you know, um, uh, uh, our viewers are going to hear exactly in graphic terms what what happened to that flight and why it came down. And then, uh, uh, was there anything the pilots could have done better? We were go going to be looking at that. And then, uh, 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 should we have better equipment installed in our airplanes to detect when uh, treacherous weather is playing a dirty game at us? You know, those are those are all the issues to make us. Okay, now safer. come next week. We'll yeah. be dealing with uh, ADC, of course, that also uh, crashed some time yeah. and killed so many prominent Nigerians. Yeah. But even as we do that, any current and burning issue, don't forget that ITV and especially this program on TMI will not leave it unanalyzed. Then until we come your way, uh, same time, same station on the program. We'll take a quick break. When we'll come back. This morning on ITV will continue. And don't forget, has been with your number one aviation freak, Mr. Godwin DK. As you wake up in the morning, the first thing in the mind is knowing what is going on around you. Following get an up to date analysis on issues on governance, politics, economy, among many other current and burning issues in both local and foreign scenes. The parliamentary intra party opposition to the APC. Well, well, you know, the intrigues and interests in parliament is not just about the policies of the party. The issue is irrespective of the.